Happy birthday, babe. Jonah's cheerful voice rung out as he entered the dimly lit restaurant, a small gift box in his hand. I couldn't help but beam at the sight of my boyfriend of five years. You didn't have to get me anything, I said, pulling him into an embrace, like I'd missed the chance to spoil my girl on her birthday. Jonah grinned and placed a soft kiss on my forehead. We settled into our usual corner booth, the flicker of candlelight dancing across the red checkered tablecloth. As we caught up over breadsticks and wine, something seemed off about Jonah's demeanor. He kept glancing toward the entrance, his leg bouncing with nervous energy. Before I could inquire, the door swung open, and a familiar face sauntered in, my cousin Celine, looking runway-ready in a skin-tight crimson dress that left little to the imagination. "'Sorry I'm late,' Celine sing-songed, draping herself over Jonah to plant an audacious kiss on his cheek. Traffic was just dreadful. My stomach bottomed out as realization struck. This wasn't just a family dinner. Jonah had planned this, whatever this was. Celine, I'm surprised to see you here. The words felt like shards of glass in my mouth. Well, when Jonah invited me to celebrate your birthday, how could I refuse? She looped her arm through his with a sickly sweet smile. He insisted we needed a reunion. My hands trembled as I clutched my napkin, my gaze flickering between my cousin and my boyfriend, silently begging one of them to reveal this was an elaborate joke. But Jonah wouldn't meet my eyes, his face flushed with guilt. The air grew thick with tension until Celine broke the silence with a melodic giggle. Oh, Lena, you should see your face. I suppose the cat's out of the bag now. She nuzzled closer to Jonah, her perfectly manicured nails tracing his arm. We didn't mean for you to find out this way, but Jonah and I are in love. The world collapsed around me in that instant. My ears rang as Jonah muttered something about trying to find the right time, and Celine prattled on about fate bringing them together. I was vaguely aware of other patrons gawking at our train wreck of a scene, but I couldn't bring myself to care. Hot, angry tears streamed down my cheeks, blurring my vision of these two despicable people before me. In that moment, all the history, all the betrayals and toxic dynamics of my relationship with Celine came rushing back with the force of a tsunami. The cousin I once considered a sister, who had torn me down at every turn and sabotaged any happiness I found, now she'd taken the one person I trusted above all others. How could you? I choked out, bobbing my head between them. With, with her? Jonah opened his mouth to respond, that familiar crease furrowing his brow, but I shoved myself away from the table with such force, my chair clattered to the floor. Save it, I spat, snatching up my purse. I can't even look at you two right now. I stormed out with as much dignity as I could muster, leaving behind the shattered remnants of the life I thought I knew. My world had shifted on its axis, throwing me violently off kilter, and there was no way to regain my balance, not after this unforgivable betrayal. I spent the night tossing and turning, replaying the horrific scene at the restaurant over and over. How could Jonah, the man I thought I knew better than myself, betray me in such a cruel way? And with Celine of all people, my own flesh and blood. The next morning, I dragged myself to Aunt Mara's place, desperate for some familial comfort and support. She pulled me into a tight hug as soon as I stepped through the door, her eyes full of pity. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. She soothed, guiding me to the living room couch. I can't believe those two did this to you. Sniffling back tears, I searched her face for answers. Did, did you know about them? Aunt Mara sighed deeply, wringing her hands. I had my suspicions, but I didn't want to believe it. Not without proof. My heart plummeted. What do you mean, suspicions? For how long has this been going on? A few months, at least, she admitted reluctantly. Celine has always been manipulative, pulling strings to get what she wants. I just hoped the family connection would stop her from going that far. White-hot rage bubbled up inside me. You knew she was up to something, and you didn't warn me? I didn't have any solid evidence, Lena, just little things here and there that seemed off. By the time I put it together, I was already the punchline, I finished bitterly, played for a fool by the man I loved and my own cousin. I wanted to protect you both, Aunt Mara insisted. Celine, she's troubled, yes, but she's still family. I hoped I could appeal to that part of her, the part that used to adore you like a sister. I barked out a harsh laugh. 
She sure has a funny way of showing it. Don't you remember how close you two used to be? Aunt Mara's eyes shone with unshed tears. You were inseparable as kids, thicker than thieves. What happened between you? The memories came flooding back. Summers spent choreographing dance routines, sharing snacks during sleepovers, whispering secrets and dreams in the dead of night. We'd been best friends, partners in crime, until high school when a rift formed, an invisible wedge driving us further and further apart each year. I don't know, I lied, swallowing hard against the lump in my throat. Of course, I knew what had torn our bond to shreds, but dredging up old wounds would only lead to more pain. An uncomfortable silence stretched between us before Aunt Mara spoke again. Celine has always been jealous of you, you know. All your accomplishments, your kind heart, your integrity, she's never had that solid moral core. My jaw ticked as an idea blossomed in the back of my mind. Well, this time her lack of integrity has gone too far. I won't let her get away with this. Lena, Aunt Mara looked stricken. I know you're hurting, but seeking revenge won't heal those wounds. It will only breed more toxicity. I'm not looking for revenge, I stated coolly, squaring my shoulders. I just want justice. For once, I want Celine to face the consequences for her cruelty and manipulation, and I'm going to make sure she does. Aunt Mara opened her mouth to protest further, but I cut her off with a raised hand. Thanks for being honest with me, Aunt Mara. I think I know what I need to do now. I stood abruptly and marched toward the front door, a newfound determination igniting in my chest. If Aunt Mara wouldn't help me expose her devious daughter, I would find a way to bring Celine down on my own no matter what it took. The next few weeks at Wilson Elementary were a welcome distraction. I threw myself into preparing for the upcoming science fair. My mind focused on supporting my students' projects rather than dwelling on my personal turmoil. That fragile peace shattered when I strode into the staff lounge one morning to find Celine, Celine perched on the battered couch, sipping coffee from a world's best teacher mug like she owned the place. Well, if it isn't my favorite cousin, she purred, eyeing me over the rim of her mug. Long time no see. I gritted my teeth, clutching my lesson plan so tightly the edges crumpled. What are you doing here, Celine? Working, of course. She batted her lashes innocently. Didn't you hear? I'm spearheading a new after-school community program. Of course she was. Celine always had to slither her way into anything good, tainting it with her poisonous presence. At an elementary school? Forgive me if I have a hard time picturing you embracing your charitable side. Celine tsked, setting her mug aside as she rose with feline grace. Still so cynical, Lena, and here I thought teaching would have instilled you with a more nurturing nature. She moved closer until we were toe-to-toe, -to -toe, her sickly sweet perfume overwhelming my senses. You see, this program will provide after-school tutoring, mentoring, all sorts of enrichment activities— a worthwhile pursuit, no? My mind raced, putting together the pieces. You're going after the grant for, for underprivileged students, the one funding our science fair, trying to sabotage my work, again. Laughing lightly, Celine trailed a fingertip down my arm, making my skin crawl. Always so suspicious, cousin. Can it be possible that we simply had the same idea? I jerked backward out of her reach. We both know that's not true. You're threatened by anything that might make me happy or successful. Celine's perfectly shaped brows arched in mock offense. My, what a negative perception you have of me, and after everything we've been through together. Memories of our ruined friendship, years of betrayal and emotional manipulation flashed through my mind in rapid succession, like pretending to be my friend while secretly undermining me at every turn. I shook my head vehemently. I'm not falling for your games anymore, Celine. The gloves are off. Is that so? She leaned in until I could make out the flecks of gold in her hazel eyes. Well, in that case, game on, dear cousin. May the best woman win. With a wink, Celine sauntered away, hips swaying provocatively. I stared after her, my fists clenched at my sides, jaw ticking. She thought she could walk all over me, using her usual manipulative tactics to steal my happiness, my success, my very livelihood. But not this time. This time I would be ready for her. This time, I would fight back with everything I had, because if Celine thought for one second that I would go down without a battle royale, she was sorely mistaken. After her betrayal with Jonah, I had nothing left to lose. 
and Celine was about to learn just how determined a woman could be when she had vengeance driving her every move. After my confrontation with Celine at school, I knew I needed to take serious action to undermine her campaign before it gained traction. But I barely had time to strategize with science fair preparations and dealing with her constant needling about the grant proposal. That's when Alex Taylor darkened my doorstep one crisp October evening. I furrowed my brow at the unfamiliar face as I pulled open the door. Can I help you? Lena Morgan? The man gave me a tight smile, eyes rimmed by purplish half-moons. I'm Alex, Celine's ex fiance My eyebrows shot up. I'd had no idea Celine was that serious with anyone, let alone engaged. Though it made sense, she was the queen of putting on airs, playing the role of blushing bride-to-be. I don't understand. What are you doing here? I came to offer my condolences, he said gruffly, and maybe get a little... He paused, mouth-twisting wryly. Vengeance. I stared at him blankly for a beat before stepping aside to usher him in. He brushed past me, already making himself at home on my sofa. I'm sorry, I'm still confused. Are you saying you want revenge on Celine, your ex? Ex is putting it mildly, Alex snorted derisively, more like the vengeful succubus who drained me of every last penny I had before discarding me like trash. The pain etched in the lines of his face was achingly familiar. I settled in the armchair across from him, sympathy stirring. I think I can relate, I murmured. She has a way of completely destroying people, doesn't she? Alex's jaw tightened as he nodded. You know, for months I suspected she was being unfaithful, overstepping boundaries with strange men. It wasn't until her latest twisted scheme that I caught her red-handed. Red-hot rage simmered just beneath the surface of his voice. That's when Celine finally confessed her dalliance with some nobody named Jonah. Left me at the altar to go slithering into his bed. My heart seized at the mention of Jonah's name, the wounds still agonizingly fresh. Of course he would be Celine's ultimate prize. She couldn't resist taking the man I loved most in the cruelest way possible. So she played you both, I said quietly, manipulated your lives, your emotions, all for her own selfish gain. She's a first-rate psychopath. Alex pinned me with a hard stare. Which is why I came to you. You're not the only one she's burned, Lena. And if we team up— Maybe we can finally make that snake pay for her misdeeds. I searched his face, seeing the echoes of my own pain and frustration mirrored back at me. Joining forces. It wasn't something I'd considered before in my quest for retribution. But having an ally with intimate knowledge of Celine's depravity, her Achilles heel, that could be invaluable ammunition. My lips curved into a slow smile. You're right, Alex. She has ruined far too many lives through her lies and treachery. I leaned forward, holding his gaze steadily. So what did you have in mind? Justice and vengeance were a deadly combination, and with her ex in my arsenal, I was about to become an unstoppable force. Watch out, Celine. This time, you knocked on the wrong door. Over the next few weeks, Alex and I fell into an easy camaraderie as we plotted our campaign against Celine. Having an insider's perspective into her psyche and past manipulations proved invaluable. You know she nearly bankrupted an entire charity I was on the board of? Alex shook his head in disgust one night over takeout containers littering my coffee table. Somehow she managed to siphon funds into her own accounts, all while acting as the face of the organization. I'm not surprised, I muttered, popping a leftover egg roll in my mouth. Celine has always loved being the center of attention, playing the hero, as long as it benefited her in the end. Alex nodded grimly. By the time we realized what she'd done, it was too late to recover most of the money. The charity folded within months, his fists clenched on the tabletop. All those people who donated in good faith, all those lives we could have helped, it makes me sick just thinking about it. Reaching across, I placed my hand over his in a comforting gesture. I'm so sorry, Alex. I had no idea she could be that monstrous. He let out a harsh exhale, some of the tension easing from his shoulders. You're one of the few who's seen her true colors, Lena, the reality behind that sugary sweet facade. I couldn't help but snort at that. Oh, I've had a front row seat to her greatest hits over the years, believe me, like the time she stole my boyfriend all through junior year, just because she knew I liked him. Alex arched an eyebrow. This was a pattern for her? Using guys to get what she wants from her friends and family? Among other things. 
I waved a hand dismissively. Don't get me started on the time she sabotaged performances, bad-mouthed me to teachers, the vicious pranks and rumors. A heavy silence fell between us as I trailed off, remembering the dark spiral of those teenage years. How utterly alone and beaten down I'd felt, like I was losing my grip on reality with Celine's relentless torment. Until one day, something inside me had simply snapped. After that, I shut her out completely, eschewing her manipulative games and focusing on salvaging what self-worth I had left. I blinked, shoving those memories aside as Alex watched me intently. The point is, Celine's depravity knows no bounds. She's a cancerous presence, leeching off those around her until they have nothing left to give. Except this time, we're putting a stop to it. His voice was low and resolute. This time, that vengeful harpy will be the one left with nothing when we're through with her. I held his gaze, my chest swelling with righteous determination. You're damn right. She's about to learn that karma can be one cruel mistress. Celine thought she could slither her way through life, preying on innocent victims without consequence. But she was about to face the ultimate punishment, having her own wicked deeds thrown back in her face for all to see. And Alex and I would be the ones to administer that deliciously brutal justice. My cousin's reign of terror was about to come to a permanent, humiliating end. After all, nobody duped Lena Morgan and got away with it. Not even family. Over the next few months, Alex and I worked tirelessly to gather ammunition against Celine. Bank statements, recordings, eyewitness accounts. We left no stone unturned in exposing her trail of deception. Finally, we had enough evidence to bury her. All that was left was to decide how to detonate the bomb. This has to be a spectacle, Alex insisted one evening as we pored over our extensive files on Celine. A public reckoning where she can't slither away or spin her usual lies. I nodded slowly, an idea taking shape. You're right. We need to hit her where it hurts. Her reputation, her fragile ego, her desire to be admired. In a flash of inspiration, I remembered the community outreach program Celine was coordinating at my school, the one that directly threatened funding for my science fair. I've got it, I said, a slow smile spreading. We hijack her precious community event, take it over, and reveal every sordid detail of her con artistry in front of her elite donors and would-be admirers. A feral grin split Alex's face. Now that's the kind of vengeance I'm talking about. Rip away the facade so they can see her for the viper she truly is. Over the next few weeks, we began coordinating an elaborate sting operation, complete with a multimedia presentation and eyewitness speakers to validate our claims. Alex's forceful charisma and my insider access to the event made us a formidable team. Still, as the day drew nearer, tendrils of doubt began creeping in. What if Celine managed to slither her way out of this too? What if our efforts only bruised her ego briefly before she inevitably regained control? I shoved those thoughts aside. This was my one chance to take her down for good, to stop the cycle of torment once and for all. There would be no going back. The night before the event, I tossed and turned, alternating between anxiety and bristling anticipation. When I finally surrendered to fitful slumber, my dreams were plagued with haunting images of Celine's past cruelties. I awoke just before dawn in a cold sweat, my heart thundering against my ribcage. It's time to end this once and for all. Later that morning, I strode into the convention center with my head held high, Alex at my side carrying the hard drive containing the evidence. We settled into our seats near the front, watching through narrowed eyes as the space filled with members of the community. Right on schedule, Celine swept in like a conquering hero, basking in the adulation as she took her place on the stage, smiling that brilliant, insincere smile of hers as the audience applauded. For a moment, a flicker of doubt gnawed at me. This woman had tormented me for decades, always staying one step ahead, dodging each attempt I made to take her down. What made me think this time would be any different? Then I caught her gaze raking the audience, that predatory hunger in her eyes, and my resolve solidified like steel. This is it. No more excuses. No more running. Time to pay the piper, cousin. Beside me, Alex must have sensed my shift, giving me the slightest nod of encouragement. As Celine launched into her opening remarks, I stood abruptly and strode down the aisle toward the stage, each step fueled by a potent mix of anger, fear, but most of all, vindication. This time, 
she was the one about to get played, and I couldn't wait to watch her entire world unravel. Celine's mouth fell open in stunned outrage as I snatched the microphone from her perfectly manicured grip. Good morning, everyone, I said, amazed by the steady timbre of my voice. I'm afraid there's been a bit of a change in programming today. Murmurs rippled through the audience as I turned to face them fully. My name is Lena Morgan, and I have some deeply disturbing information to share about the woman you've all come to celebrate. Celine recovered quickly, that too bright smile stretching her lips as she moved to take back the mic. Why, cousin, whatever are you going on about? Surely you're not still upset over that little misunderstanding with Jonah. This has nothing to do with Jonah, I cut her off sharply, though I'll be sure to fill him in on the lurid details later. From the front row, Alex sprang into action, firing up the multimedia presentation we'd spent weeks meticulously curating. Bank statements, audio recordings, testimonies from Celine's past victims. A vivid portrait of greed, duplicity, and sociopathic behavior. As the first damning piece of evidence flashed across the screens, a stunned hush fell over the room. I could taste the disbelief, the palpable sense that these upstanding community members were having the veil ripped away from their eyes including Jonah, who sat frozen beside me, his expression shifting from confusion to horror as each new monstrous transgression was revealed. No, Celine, tell me this isn't true, he rasped out, face ashen. Please, baby, I need to hear your side. But Celine seemed to have been rendered momentarily mute, her eyes wild and desperate as they ping-ponged between the screens and her dwindling audience. I watched the smug veneer cracking in real time, reveling in the glorious destruction. The evidence speaks for itself, I'm afraid. This is the real Celine Reynolds, a pathological liar and con artist who walks through life taking everything she can get her claws into. Finally, snapping out of her trance, Celine turned murderous eyes on me. How dare you? She seethed, manicured nails digging into her palms. You've always been jealous of me, Lena trying to sabotage everything I've worked for with your sad, empty life. A bitter laugh burst from my lips. Are you kidding me right now? I'm the one with the sad life? I shook my head, suddenly numb to the scrutiny of the dwindling crowd. All I could focus on was the wretched woman crumbling before me like a house of cards. For years you belittled me, stole from me, stomped on my dreams and relationships, all because your pathetic ego couldn't stand me having any shred of happiness. My voice dripped with years of built-up venom. Well, no more, Celine. I'm done being your punching bag. Stalking forward, I threw every ounce of my anger and disgust into my parting jab. From this moment on, you'll be just another washed-up, disgraced nobody, alone and empty, with nothing but your greed and jealousy to keep you company. For a long, delicious moment, Celine and I stared each other down, twin infernos of rage and anguish blazing in our eyes, then she was scrambling off the stage in a flurry of tears and screeching protests as the convention center erupted into pandemonium. I stood frozen center stage, the cyclone of chaos swirling around me as Jonah and Alex, then others, rushed up to comfort or confront me. But their voices were muffled, drowned out by the deafening thrum of victory pounding through my veins. After over a decade of torment at Celine's hands, she had finally received her comeuppance. And as the last embers of her reputation went up in flames all around me, I savored the blissful sense of release. A heavy burden had been lifted. The mental shackles that had bound me to her toxicity for so long were at last obliterated, leaving me lighter than I'd felt in years. My war with Cellini was over, and I, Lena Morgan, had emerged the undisputed victor. The fallout from the community center showdown was swift and brutal. Within days, Celine's sordid history had made headlines across the city. Corporate sponsors dropped her program like a scorching stone. The very people who had fawned over her were now turning their backs in droves, sickened by her deceit. As for me, I reveled in every salacious detail, reading each new expose with a mixture of vindication and pity for my shattered cousin. While part of me felt a twinge of remorse for dismantling her so thoroughly, the larger part simply basked in the euphoria of being free from her toxic stranglehold. Jonah tried, unsuccessfully, to convince me he'd been an unwitting victim of Celine's manipulations, as if that absolved him of his own culpability in devastating me. "'I'm so sorry, Lena,' he pleaded during one of his endless voicemails. 
I never meant to hurt you like this. You have to know that deep down, Celine. She's a master at deception, twisting things to suit her needs. I snorted at the familiar litany of excuses, easily deleting the message. If Jonah thought a few puppy-dog apologies could erase the gut-wrenching betrayal of his actions, he had another thing coming. I was well and truly done with him. The only person who seemed to fully understand my newfound sense of peace was Alex. My unlikely ally had become an irreplaceable part of my life through the hellish months we spent plotting downfall. Feels good to breathe freely again, doesn't it? He grinned over glasses of celebratory wine one evening, like a thousand-pound weight has finally been lifted. I clinked my glass to his with a satisfied smile. Something like that. I honestly didn't realize how much of my life was shackled by that woman until I detached myself from her venom. Leaning back on the couch, I felt the tension bleed from my shoulders, an unfamiliar but welcome sensation. I spent so many years terrified of her, jumping at every shadow, always wondering when the next attack would come. I shook my head slowly. But now? That hold is shattered. She has zero power over me. To moving on from toxic influences, Alex raised his glass in a salute. May we never look back. Here, here. As the weeks passed, that cathartic energy fueled me with a renewed sense of self-worth and purpose. I refocused my efforts at school, investing every ounce of passion into my students' projects and the upcoming science fair. The first time one of my kids won a grant for their legitimately brilliant proposal, pride swelled in my chest. This was what I was meant for, nurturing young minds and helping them spread their wings, uninhibited by the toxic cloud of jealousy and deception I'd lived under for so long. At the ceremony, Aunt Mara swept me into her arms, tears shining in her eyes. Oh, Lena, I'm so proud of you, she whispered fiercely. The strength and resilience you've shown. She pulled back, cupping my face tenderly. Your parents would have been in awe of the woman you've become, leaving that poisonous influence behind for good. I blinked back my own tears as her words washed over me. Perhaps for the first time I truly appreciated the journey that had led me to this point. Every anguished step had built fortitude, sharpened my spirit, reminded me of who I was and who I wanted to be. As I stood on that stage, clutching my award with students cheering me on, I felt something shift fundamentally inside. A lingering shroud lifted, allowing the light to flood in at last. Celine no longer haunted me, her shadow permanently banished by the brilliant future shining ahead. I had been to the darkest depths and clawed my way into the blazing truth. Nothing and nobody would dim my spirit again.